Hello, it's Russ here, and uh, welcome to episode three of the Clockwork Goblins painting table. And uh, at the moment we're staring at the craggy features of the butcher. The reason for this is, today I'm going to be talking about painting skin, and in particular, painting faces. We're going to be looking at how to paint a male face, how to paint a female face, and some techniques you can use to really make skin on faces pop. But these techniques will also be able to be applied to uh, bodies in general, and also they will work with different coloured uh, paint schemes, such as blue for trolls, green, browns, or whatever. Although I'm going to be doing this with a fairly traditional flesh tone palette. Before we start painting, I just want to talk a little bit about the properties of skin that we're trying to capture on our models. First of all, we're going to look at something called organic planes. As you can see from this picture, the face is divided up into a series of flat planes. Now we think of skin as a fairly curved soft object, which it is, but by dividing into these flat planes and seeing how the light behaves, we can create a highly realistic set of shading. What we're interested in here is something called contrast shading. That's where the lowest shadows are often related to the highest highlights, as you can see on these cheeks and around the nose area. Uh, this helps define one of the key elements of skin, which is its translucence. Skin absorbs light, it's actually see-through. So light behaves in a slightly unusual way, and we want to capture this in our painting by producing these graded shaded areas and these bright highlighted areas and combining the two to create this sense of light penetrating the skin producing these deep shadows and these bright highlights often in conjunction with each other such as where wrinkles occur. The other thing we're going to be looking at is something called tonal variation. This is where skin is not a uniform colour and we can have fairly extreme examples of this such as with my troll models where I've used pink as a tonal variation to the blue and we can have some fairly subtle tonal variation such as on this butcher model where we've got a very subtle red area picked out around the eyes to create some tonal variation for the eye sockets. Okay, those are the techniques that we're going to be using. Let's get started. <laughs> I'm just about to start my new Retribution army, so I'm going to use these models to demonstrate my skin painting techniques. And I'm using these three models. I've got a Battle Mage here, who I'll be using to demonstrate contrast highlighting and shading on. I've got my uh, Arca uh, excuse me, Arcanist here, who I'll be demonstrating some tonal variations on and maybe giving him a bit of rough and tumble stubble. And then I've got my Mage Hunter Assassin at the end here, who I will be using to show how female skin is handled in a similar way to male skin, but we use a slightly softer shading technique to emphasise her feminine qualities. She'll also be used to demonstrate how to paint mouths very effectively. So, where do we start? Well, painting skin begins much like anything else. I'm going to be using a mid-tone on my skin shading uh, scale, and I'm going to be base coating and ink washing. So we're going to start off using this Battle Mage model. And I'm going to bring my palette in from the back so that you can see the colours that I'm mixing. And I'm going to be using as my principal colour Games Workshop Elf Flesh. I'm going to be shading that by mixing in a little tanned flesh to begin with. If you don't have elf flesh and tanned flesh, you can use whatever flesh colours you prefer. Iosian flesh is very good. Uh, I like bronze flesh, although it's slightly yellowy. And instead of tanned flesh, we can be using battlefield brown or any other warm brown colour to shade the skin. So I'm going to bring some elf flesh to my palette. I'm going to bring some tanned flesh in an equal amount and I'm going to mix the two together. I'm going to water this down with a bit of water there. Give my brush a clean so I can control the amount of paint on it.
and I'm just going to apply that to the surface of the model. So we'll catch up when this is completely base coated in a moment. Okay, so I've base coated that battle mage and I went ahead and base coated up the other two models to match as you can see. So they've got a fairly rich skin tone at the moment, no detailing picked out, and I'm not too worried about the richness of the tone even though I want my elves to be quite pale. I'll pick all of that up in the highlighting. The next stage, fairly standard, is going to be to apply a basic shading ink wash and for this I'm going to use a blend of Devlin Mud and a tiny touch of Ball Red. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush load of Devlin Mud and a brush load of Ball Red and mix the two together. I'm going to look at that colour a little redder than I want, so I'm going to add some more Devil and Mud to even it up. That's more like it. Right, I've got my brush still wet, as you can see, from rinsing it. I'm just going to add a little water to the mix, and I'm going to generously apply that to the surface of the model. Turn him round. And apply it again. And the front there. Excuse me. And you can see. Just brush a bit more on. You can instantly see that we've now got some good shading working. Just bear with me, I'm going to frame that against a white background. There we go. Now that's a nice level of shading, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to apply it to the other models as well. Okay, the ink wash has now dried and it's done a pretty good job of creating the shading that I want. However, I always with faces treat the ink as just a guide, it's a starting point for my shading. And there are a few areas that I want to emphasize the shading in. So to do that, I'm going to take my original mix, which I still have a small amount of here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tone it with some brown. And I'm using Battlefield Brown And I'll just bring a brush load of Battlefield Brown, a very small amount, just a little bit there on the end of my brush, to tone this colour down. And so I've got a fairly deep brown colour. Now, I want to apply that pretty watered down. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a drop of P3 Mixing Medium here. If you've not used this, it's a very good product for mixing in a translucency, much as you'd get from water, but it doesn't thin the paint as much, making it a little more controllable. What I'm going to do with that, again, let's get that nicely framed, is I'm just going to apply this in the eye sockets, and around the front of the brow and it is a very subtle effect just deepening the colour and because it is so translucent if I wish to I can come back and apply more of this at a later date even after the shading's put on that's all of that that I need to put on there Moving these paints out of the way a second, the text on them I think is affecting the camera's focusing. That's better, that's nice and sharp, we can see that. So that's the shading done, a little bit of brown on that forehead is all I need. 
Okay, to highlight the skin, I've taken the original base coat colour, I've added a tiny amount of elf flesh, and I will be adding more as I go on, and I've added a touch of water. So what I'm going to do now is apply my highlights. I'm going to turn it so we can see the top of the head there. And my highlighting is just subtly brushed on and then as before I'm going to blend the edges with a little bit of watered paint to get a smooth transition from that dark area that I've created towards this highlight and I'm going to repeat that around the edges at the top of the head as well so that we've got light fading to dark that's a fairly standard highlight and then to strengthen the effect we're going to produce some contrast highlighting and that means out of that dark patch we're going to have the bright brow so the eyebrow area is going to be very bright and the edge of the brow crease here I'm going to pick out brighter as well so that we've got this strong contrast between the sharp bright brows and the deep shading around the edges of the skull that we just created and then I'm going to pick out the nose and the tops of the cheeks so that we've got deep shading at the base of the cheeks and bright highlights above them. Okay, let's take a look at a high res of that. The remainder of the highlighting process is just going to be adding successional layers of white to my mix and bring the highlights gently out. So here's our finished highlighting and I've used the opportunity as I've highlighted up to create this idea of the contrast shading and I'll take you through what I've done now. We've got the deep shading around the edges of the skin that we applied at the start but onto that I've worked a bright highlight for the brows and the edge and the contrast of the sharp bright ear and then into the centre of that shading I put some bright highlighted wrinkles which gives a sense of the strain and concentration of the battle mage. Wrinkles are folds in the skin and then the skin being squeezed tightly into a ridge next to that fold so they will form bright highlights next to the deepest shading a trick that you can do is to just flick a tiny speck of wrinkling around the edges of the eye so I've got some deep shading and some bright highlights just here I'm gonna bring that in close for you to see and this just gives a sense of tension around the edge of the eye the other place I've created my contrast shading is on the cheek by highlighting the cheek very brightly at its top edge just before it meets the deep shadow of the eye we get this sense of the contrast shading that creates our very dramatic skin effect. So all I've done is take a little bit of red wash and wash the eye sockets that I'd already highlighted allowing a very small amount of that red wash to cover some of the highlighted areas just so that we get a sense of that red tone and I added the tiniest amount just to the crease between the brow just dabbed it on with the end of the brush it's subtle but it gives a little sense of the blood under the surface what this guy needs now is some eyes and I can call this skin tone completed <laughs> 